Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be trying to talk about um, the connections on a regular Toy Story Signature Collection Buzz Lightyear computer board. I've already done a video in the past showing what the utility belt buzz looks like. And uh, if anyone's interested, I could link them that video. Also, just right off the bat, if anyone needs to contact me, YouTube is a major pain in the butt because... I've had it now multiple times where people will try and get in contact with me or send me a link or email or whatever and they block it. You can go to my about info which is now a bit harder to find because YouTube decided to redo their whole infrastructure. So if you can find my about info by clicking on like my channel and then I think more info or I don't know how they've, they've rearranged it now but... I have an email and a phone number listed there, which you can contact me by, just in case YouTube decides to randomly block the comments. So that's just forewarning. I always try and get back to people if I actually receive the message. So just, um, yeah, make sure that goes through. So you can always contact me via text or um, with email. The phone number listed there doesn't really receive calls. It goes to a automatic answering machine that I have for a different channel. So anyway, um, first off, uh, removing the four screws, which is the first steps in just taking apart your buzz. If you turn them over, you'll see the holes, which are located here and on the other side. So... Again, you can watch my older videos. I document pretty well how to take them apart and put them back together. Make sure that you take off the helmet or rotate it backwards so that it doesn't get in your way. And then you'll notice it is actually specific which way it goes in. So this one that's sort of in the middle is the laser arm. And then this one is the communicator arm. And then these are marked left and right. There's an L in the top corner you can see. And this one has an R. So then you can know that laser arm is R and communicator is L. Put that off to the side. Then you can take out the head sculpt to look at this. Then um, let's go over the connections. So I'll zoom in a bit more. We'll try and go from right to left, and then I'll document it all again just to make sure I didn't miss any of them. But this one here is the switch and power, I think. it. I think it delivers power directly from the battery pack, if I remember. Yeah, it seems to give power directly. Either way, though, it gives ground, I can for sure see. So this gives power and the switch input from the batteries and just telling it demo or on off. Um, then here is the motor. So this is that physical motor unit that actually rotates the head side to side for the different effects. Oftentimes I just have this plug pulled or just remove the motor unit entirely because the motors all had a major flaw in the fact they used a tiny little plastic gear that was 10 teeth and they crack. So I have been able to replace it, but I don't really guarantee that it'll keep it fixed. It seems to always break. So it's just a bad design flaw with the gear ratio of having the head constantly rotate back and forth. This one here is the microphone. So that is this little mic in his chest plate that uh, can basically detect loud noises, so clapping and stuff. It's located right here. So if you clap really loud, he'll have different responses. Up here is the speaker. And then we'll go... Um, before I forget, this one here is the chest buttons. So this is important if you want to be able to access the different quotes from his chest plate. Then um, down here, 
is his laser arm. Up above it is the communicator arm, so the black connector. On this side is um, helmet close, helmet open. Helmet close is the right hand side or um, laser arm just to be specific. And then below it is left arm or communicator arm. And uh, so that's helmet close and helmet open. It's printed there. Then this on the white three pin connector is the sensors for the head. So this these wires tell it uh, what to do. So it tells the motor if it needs to rotate left or right and sort of general positioning. And then the one above that is the right wing. It's the laser arm side wing light. Above that is the wing opener close sensor and then this one is communicator arm wing light. So laser arm and communicator arm wing light. And then this one is just the sensor to know if they're open or close. This um, green tube thing is the sensor that tells it if you're in flight quote unquote or if you're standing when um, you have his wings deployed. So this has a little ball that'll rattle sort of back and forth. So he can sort of tell if he's being like uh, moved around or if he's standing upright. So that'll correspond to different sound effects. Uh, so yeah, just a top off switch, microphone, motor, the chest buttons, Oh, uh, close and open sensor, um, right and left arm, head sensors for positioning, the two different wing lights, and the wing open and close sensor, uh, speaker if I didn't already cover, microphone, you get, I, I've covered it now. Um, like I say in my older videos, I did, um, show what the inside of a uh, uh, <laughs> darn it the the anti gravity belt utility belt buzz what the computer board connections are so um, on that one the computer board is arranged slightly different because up here they have another plug that is four pins wide and that does the button for his waist and the light up. Um, functions of the utility belt. I'm not sure what this is because it's labeled chest but does not have any pins soldered. And uh, I think this might be a remnant of uh, another feature they were going to implement and didn't. And I guess um, if I get enough interest I could try and solder this up and see or someone else could try it out and let me know what that does if you connect those two pins while he's on or to see if an LED will light up there I'm not really sure what that will do because obviously this board is not capable of driving a utility belt buzz it doesn't have the same quotes or features so I doubt it'll light up any lights there um also, I'm pretty sure now in retrospect, in one of my older videos, I tried to see what these headers were, and I tried soldering something on there, but I'm pretty sure this is an FTDI programming interface for the board. If you tried to upload any code to this, though, you would probably have a lot of trial and error of trying to figure out what the different pins are, and then... I'm not even sure if you could get quotes on here again if you erase them because usually with simple boards like this, they're one-time program only. So there's no way to pull firmware off. So if you were to connect to a computer, it would probably recognize that this is a board. And then if you tried to use something like Arduino IDE to program to it, it'll probably maybe work. I'm not really sure what this is. I don't really want to try it out, though, because I might permanently erase the quotes. Because they most likely had a special way of actually loading the sound effects 
into the board, and there's no way to get them back out if um, you erase them. So, anyway, I think that pretty much um, covers it. If anyone has any questions or comments, just let me know or contact me through my phone number or email. Um, so, yeah, thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for other videos. Uh, unfortunately, though, with the Ultimate Collectors Buzz Lightyear, they are one of the neatest toys that I have and definitely my favorite Buzz Lightyears. But since they don't have them available in stores anymore, they are definitely hard to get. I'm not sure if they make a Toy Story 5, if they'll release them again. Uh, with Toy Story 4, they did release a sort of lower quality version. And unfortunately, due to my channel's popularity, Thinkway Toys seemed to stop offering replacement parts. There was a short time at which you could actually contact them, and the you could get replacement arms or a globe, and there was ways that you could actually get parts, but now I think that's all extinct. So taking it apart is more for your own curiosity, I guess, just since there's not a widely available parts resource. If you have two buzzes, though, and like one of them has a broken wing and the other one doesn't have a working arm or something, you could probably mismatch them and get a completely working buzz. But the problem is you would at least need the working parts off of one. So anyway, thank you for watching and stay tuned for other videos.